Welcome to another broadcast of the New Inspiration Church of God in Christ. The church where everybody is somebody, where the power of God falls just like rain, for there is no church like this church anywhere near this church. That's the New Inspiration Church of God in Christ. We can be reached at P.O. Box 307722 in the city of Gahanna, Ohio. The zip is 43230. You can view us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. on Facebook Live. And then again on Tuesday nights, we do a prayer from 5.30 to 6. I want to wake you, welcome you to another broadcast of the new Inspiration Church of God in Christ Breakthrough Program with Reverend Ron. And my guest today is Reverend Beth Davis of the Faith Harvest Fellowship. And I'm going to ask her to introduce herself. And I will do that. I am Beth Davis. And one of the ministers at Faith Harvest Fellowship, and also a couple ladies, uh, we come together and we do a great pro program um, on, called Join the Journey, and uh, you, can, you can see that program on YouTube, and you can also find us on a local MCTV, and there's several different channels, you'd have to check their schedule. Yeah, I didn't say this last time, but we, um, we grew up in the same area, in fact, yes. her, high her, her high school, her husband and I went to high, high school. school together, so this is like family, you know, they say it's a family affair. And uh, I, I want to thank uh, Pastor Jerry O'Brien um, for the use of the facility. This beautiful set that you see behind me was his choosing these chats. This guy is just top rate and we want to thank him and we want to thank all of the camera people. Can you name everybody so I don't forget anybody? Yes, we've got Ron Perry, uh, he's actually instrumental in setting up and tearing down as well and volunteers his time and we have um, Jim Howe and Kathy Reeves and Reverend Jackie Nussbaum um, and Tammy Jones those are the crew members right now. Yeah, Tammy's the one that I like to pick on. Yeah. She's, she's, um, we're, we're, the show's a little bit different because normally what the purpose of the New Inspiration show is we have people that come on and they give the story behind the story. They're in ministry and we right. let them tell their story but, but this is part two of what Christmas means to me. Um, and on the last show, we talked about some of the traditions that we mm -hmm. do, because mm -hmm. we come from different cultures and everybody celebrates Christmas, but, but everybody celebrates Christmas different. Right. Um, and some of the things we talked about, and, you know, before I go, let me read the scripture. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna go to Luke 137 and it says, uh, for with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it upon me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. In this story, we have where the Holy Spirit comes and impregnates Mary. Mm -hmm. And this is really controversial because some people don't believe in the virgin birth and all that kind of crazy stuff. And I never knew that you came out of Catholic background, which is really um, awesome because within the Catholic Church it's something that you really learn um, in the Protestant Church we kind of touched a, a little bit about it but anyway so the Holy Spirit comes and impregnates Mary and Jesus is born mm -hmm. and I think what's really nice we didn't talk about this but we're going to we're going to get more biblical this time I think first of all the way he's born when you hear the Bible story or the Christmas story about Jesus the way he's born. What do you hear? I hear that he was born to a virgin lady that was never with a man. And um, he grew up a boy um, and didn't start his ministry till he was later later in life. But he, he came to he came to save us because we needed saved and we needed him to be Lord and Savior yeah. of our life. And, and see what I hear is that's why I ask you. First of all, the way he's born, he's born a virgin. in a manger. Oh, I see. I was born in a hospital. Yeah. Well, was you born in a cab or in a hospital? No, I was born in a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> he was born in a barn, basically. It, it, uh, you were born in a barn? Too? No, he was born in a yeah, barn. He was born in a, yeah, he was born in a manger. Basically. basically. And, be, and, 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 and they couldn't find room. In, and I think another reason why he had to be born where he was because they were trying to kill him. Right. See, here's what one of the really big significance about Christ, the king recognizes mm -hmm. the authority 
that Jesus will have mm -hmm. before he's born. I'm going to say that again. Before he's even born, he the King Herod knew that he was a threat before he's even, so there's a, yeah. there's a hit, there's a, there's a death sentence put on Jesus at birth. Yes. Isn't that amazing? It is. It is. Um, I had a thought there. Shoot, does that happen to you sometimes? Oh, yeah. What was your, th <laughs> what was your thought? But it goes away real quick sometimes, and then I lose it, and I have to have it come back. Um, yes, he, he did have he did have something on his head, you know, to take him out. But, um, but still, I think there's, there's significance in him being born like he was in a manger, in a barn, or whatever well, you want to say. Why do you think that? What do you think is significant? Of because he, he was going to be different than the kings that the world knew around him at that time. You know, the kings lived in palaces and, and they dressed, you know, and talked in a way. And Jesus, he, he came low to serve the people. See, see all this bling? See, I'm glad you said that. See, see <laughs> I normally don't wear this. But I'm glad you said that. Yes. Because that's what we've done mm -hmm. to Christmas. We made it into bling, bling, and I got a lot of it on today. I mean, I even got the, I even got the bracelet. I got the stuff. I don't wear it, man. My wife buys me some nice stuff. See, I even got the bracelet. See, see all, see this bling. Mm -hmm. That's what we did to Christmas. Mm -hmm. We did. We materialized it. We materialized it. Commercialized it. it. And I say it because then it comes away from Jesus. It's not about commercializing it. It's about Jesus. Jesus is the reason. He's the reason that we're here today. He's the reason we're going to be here tomorrow. He's the reason we're going to get through the things we go through. He's the reason. Without him, we're nothing. You said with God, all things are possible. Without God, separation. But you know what, though, Reverend Beth, what's, what's really frightful? Mm -hmm. If some husbands don't wipe by their wives Christmas presents, they're going to say, they don't love them. Oh, no. And it could cause a divorce. No, no. That's crazy. I mean, this is all you bought me. That's crazy. This is all I'm worth. That's crazy. I mean, but this is real what I'm saying. I mean, it's the real. That's the real thing. Well, I liked what you said, the first program that we'd done earlier, um, uh, that you and your wife share and give to each other all year long. It's not, it doesn't have to be like the world says, you do everything on this one day, you know, spread it out. Spread it out, spread the season out, spread the joy out, spread the giving out. Let it be a way of life, because that's what Jesus came to show us how to serve. Well, see, in a, in a relationship, in a relationship, you can bless anytime. Mm -hmm. And that's what's important right. with knowing Jesus, because Amen. when you get a relationship, he doesn't have to wait to Christmas to bless right. you. Right, right. He doesn't have to wait to Easter bless you. That's right. He can bless you anytime. Anytime. And here, here's, here's another blessing. It says, come boldly before the throne of grace that we can obtain mercy in due time. Mm -hmm. So you could go out and mess up. And because of the mercy and the grace of God, and because God doesn't need Christmas to bless you. That's right. God doesn't need Christmas to forgive you. That's right. You don't need Easter to forgive you. Now, we need Easter because you, because Jesus died on Calvary and to, on the third day he got up with all power Rose in his hand. Out, out of the grave. The crucifixion. And, but what we've done, we got this one day and then the other day we do is Valentine's Day, which isn't supposed to be. <laughs> and then we got Sweetest Day and all that stuff. And, and, and here's what I'm saying. There's nothing wrong with giving gifts. There's nothing right. wrong. I've got, I've got a lot of great nieces and great nephews now and, you know, watching them, Uncle Wani, they, they, they can't say my name yet because there's none, so they say Uncle Wani, uh -huh. you know, like, like a Wani, you know, uh -huh. and, um, <laughs> and, and, and they're, they're, they're looking to see if I bought them something because mm -hmm. it's been put in them that on Christmas they're going to get a bunch of gifts. Yes. Now, I got in trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, if my sister's watching this, I, I ain't going to play this on Christmas. It's going to be after so she, she can get me, but I got in <laughs> trouble um, when I was younger because my sister's three sons came to Pennsylvania to stay with, to stay with me. And um, I don't know how, but I told them there wasn't no Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> my sister came and got her boy. Oh no. You got yourself in <laughs> she was like, why are you gonna oh. ruin my Christmas? My, my. So 
I got a really, I got a million dollar question. That, and listen, this is <laughs> our opinion. This is my right. show. This is, what do you think about the myth of Santa Claus? What do I think about it? Now, you know I, I'm going to ask you. I mean, what do you, what do you think about it? Is it okay to say there's a Santa? Is it not okay? Well, uh, let me just tell you what I did with my children as they grew up, because now I have adult sons, you know, and, and grandchildren as well now. But there was a book put out, and I don't remember, because I would have had to look it up if I had known I was going to bring it up. Um, might have been put out through Focus on the Family, if you're familiar with that yes, organization. Yes, I am. Um, that talked about St. Nicholas, okay? Because it was a true, you know, that's true. And that's how I read that book to my kids and my grandkids and just shared with them about this, this history of St. Nicholas and how this all came to be. And then what the world came in and did it because you know they have one thing on their mind and that's money. That's why it's all, it's all around making money and greed. But they came in and commercialized it and made it this big, Santa Claus thing, but St. Nicholas is very true. There's truth to who that was and what he, what he did. So I shared that story with them as they were growing up. Santa Claus, you know, I don't talk about Santa Claus. We don't talk about Santa Claus today mm -hmm. with my grandkids. They know we give gifts to each other, you know, but it's not about Santa's coming, and even when they were little. Well, see, there, there's a couple of, um, I'm not on Ask the Pastor, I gotta tell myself this. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of things that you said mm -hmm. that kind of throw up flags and, and okay. uh, but not bad. Um, flags can be good. What some, what some people say, and I don't say this, that there's nothing wrong with when kids are younger, mm -hmm. allowing them to believe. believe in Santa Claus, the other thing is the Easter Bunny, and the Easter Bunny is very bad. Another holiday is Halloween, which is really, really bad. bad. <laughs> All these are, are pagan holidays. Right, right. So where um, where Christmas actually comes from, she bought in the St. Nicholas part, and that's good, because mm -hmm. that's another aspect. It is. But it was a pagan holiday. It was actually a, a pagan holiday that originally started, and I just talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I, could, I, could, I, I told them to ask the pastor the years and why they did it. I'm not going to go through all that today. Mm -hmm. But um, so what we did is we, we, the pagan calendar became a part of the world system. Mm -hmm. And we as Christians are in the world system. So these holidays that we're celebrating, because Jesus was not born on Christmas Day. Right. I mean, he, he wasn't. I mean, he wasn't. But we're not trying to take away the celebration of Christ's birthday. What right. we're saying is when too much emphasis, because right now, Christmas is one of the things that the economy uses to, to survive. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if mm -hmm. Christmas sales are off, it'll mess with the economy. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you really get, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When Christmas, over yeah. the last couple of years, we had COVID. And, w and what people stopped doing is going to the stores and they started buying online. And that's mm -hmm. where businesses like Amazon or those started oh, making my. a lot of money. But we commercialized it. And this is basically what I'm saying. One of the things that we didn't talk about with Christmas is all of the like, food and all mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. like the eggnog and the mistletoe. I remember when I was little, I used to try to snag people under the mistletoe because <laughs> there's a lot of fun yes yes um we used to go downtown the santa claus used to come off of what bank was that citizens was that citizens one of those bank ones it's not it's there but it's a it's, different name i think it was called citizens bank i think that's what it was called but we it used to come off of top of the bank and yes we'd all be down there and then i mean i could think of you know one thing i missed though there was some christmas candy that they had back then mm -hmm. that i can't find no more i know you're right there was like these creams, because we, we, you know, that's one thing that's nice about um, uh, Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel has yes, I love a that. lot of the old school candy. I love that. But we're, what I'm saying today, somehow, we got to try to make Christmas be both natural and spiritual. That's what this whole show is about. Mm -hmm. It's all about, you know, and maybe sometimes I am a Grinch. You know, maybe because, you know, in, in, our in our church, what we did and what we try to do is we try to make sure that all of our seniors 
get presents. Mm -hmm. My wife does that. My wife is she's she's special with that. Wow, that's she awesome. She spends a lot of money doing that's that stuff. That's awesome. But we try to make sure that all of because you know the biggest the demographic of my church is seniors, and she tries to make sure that everybody has something. And then another thing that I think is good is there's some churches that have meals. They have the actual Christmas mm -hmm. meal, the whole Definitely. nine yards to make sure that people Everybody try to eat. Them. And that's another time for good fellowship. It's done on Christmas and it's done more on Christmas. There's more gifts give away. Yeah. Some of the sororities and some of the other fraternal organizations in Columbus spend tons of money. Mm. Columbus, the uh, TV stations and all that, they have tons of gifts trying to make sure that all of the kids mm -hmm. have gifts. My only question is, why don't we do this with food year mm -hmm. round? Mm -hmm. Why don't we? And it's just, so Reverend Beth, is, is, so, so we can get out of the doom and gloom, what is a good message that you would leave with the people? About Christmas? Yes. That we need Jesus. We all need Jesus. If you don't have Jesus, that's where the doom and gloom, that's where the hard times, the hardships, that's where the, uh, the yuck comes from because you're trying to do things on your own. We need Jesus. That's the bottom line. That's the only thing. We need Jesus. Everybody needs him. And you need to keep him in the center of your family and the celebrations and passing it on to your children. You know, I mean, we, uh, we would even read the Christmas story when my boys were young and at home, you know, before we did anything, you know, and we gave them gifts, you know, um, we would sit down and read the story in Luke, you know, and talk about that for a little bit before. And as they got older, it was like, you know, oh, we didn't want to, but we still did it, you know, we still did that. And that's important to have Jesus in the center of your celebration, because without Jesus, what else is there? What else is there? Nothing. And I, I, I think that sometimes he's not the center of the celebration. Oh, I know he's not, but we have to get, get it turned around. We are the lights, you know. You know, uh, The world's just going to be the way the world's going to be. They don't know mm -hmm. any better. So we are the lights that God sends out into there. And not that you go out and you preach down somebody's you know, neck. You can't do it that way. Well, yeah, well, but one thing you were saying is that we have to have Jesus. Yes. So that's more of a personal yeah, it um, is. One of the things that you can do is invite people to your house. Yes. And to your and, celebration. And to your celebration, and then make sure that you talk about Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's awesome that churches that Christmas mm -hmm. is going to be on Sunday. I yes, think that is I know. so. Yeah. <laughs> and we're having a. Um, we're going to do a. We're going to do a, a celebration. I'm not going to do it special just because it's Christmas. I mean, there'll be some Christmassy stuff in it, but I think that's nice. And, and, and I want to thank you for, um, it's funny how mm -hmm. Reverend Beth has a show that's been on as long as mine and she's trying to act all shy today. Um, <laughs> Reverend Beth to me is Joyce Myers number yeah. two. She's a Joyce Myers junior uh, because of the love and the compassion and the knowledge base that you have of the word. Because, uh, you know, you're being all shy today. She has a strong <laughs> knowledge base of the word. And then she has really a compassion and love for people. And I think when, that when we lose that, mm -hmm. I think uh, earlier I had to go to the hospital today. I tried to speak to everybody I saw. Mm -hmm. Some people were uncomfortable. I, all I'd say is hi. And yeah. then if they said hi back, I would say have a nice day. Mm -hmm. Every single person I saw. That's awesome. Because you just never know you don't. what people are suffering with. That's right. What's going on in their life. And what we can do, mm -hmm. we can take the attention and put it on ourselves. Because i got a whole bunch of stuff going on in my own personal life right now. <laughs> or we can call what they call it is spread the Christmas, Christmas cheer. Mm -hmm. Spreading the Christmas cheer is not necessary to give them. Um, my mother, bless her heart, the the Christmas before she died, um, mm -hmm. I came up and I took my mom to the bank. And I, she probably took out about $2,000 on it. And she said, um, let's go to Bueller's. So we went to Bueller's. Mm -hmm. 
And my mom walks around the store and she went up by the cash register. And she kind of watched the people. Mm -hmm. And what my mom saw, mm. that somebody had a need, mm -hmm. she paid for all of wow. her groceries. I didn't know she was about ready to die. She must have known. Yes, she did. And she, they take out their money and she said, put back your money, baby. We didn't even know these people. Wow. Well, that's, yeah, that ministers. And there's people around the country that walk into stores like Walmart and they pay for people's, and there's nothing wrong with mm -mm. that. There isn't. But make sure that you know Jesus. Who is he? Some people call him the lily of the valley, the bright in the morning star. Mm -hmm. Bread when I'm hungry, water when I'm thirsty. He's a friend to the friendless. He's peace when there's no peace. He's joy when there's no joy. Mm -hmm. But the most important part about Jesus is getting that relationship. Yeah. Asking him to come into your heart and making him a part of your life 365 days a year. <laughs> I probably, he's probably a part of mine, probably, I'm probably up to 220 because you know, mm -hmm. everybody has those days See, people ain't, they're not honest. They just try to, there's some days that, that I should have kept him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I know what you Cause mean. Because we have a whole bunch of stuff that happens. I know. And, and, but one of the things that we try to do as we close is, it says in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18, this is a very powerful scripture. Sounds familiar. In everything. Give, give thanks. thanks for this is the will of for god. this is the will of god in christ jesus concerning you mm -hmm. and then another another That's one is good. another another good one and i'm trying to work on this one this is in psalms i think it's 37 and 1 i think it's, oh. it's either 37 and 1 or 34 and i'm i'm gonna it says no 37 1 says fret not yourself yes, do not fret so the 34 is the one that i want uh, and it says uh I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall, shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, yes. Woo. That's another good one. That's a good one, ain't that it? That is a good one. How do, I, how do you do that? Practice. Just practice it. The next time something comes, just say, Father, you said. Now, listen, you're not um, thanking him for. Right. Make it clear. But you're thanking him in the midst of it. There you go. You try to find something that's positive mm -hmm. about what you're in, and you start to thank him. Because what you're doing is, see, the scripture says that God inhabits the praises of his people. So as you praise God, you're inviting him in mm -hmm. to, your, to your situation. Yes. Yeah. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Now listen, in all of your ways, acknowledge him. Okay, Father, I'm in this situation, and I acknowledge you, Father, and I'm asking you to give me wisdom. And then you know what you got to do? You got to wait and listen. Because mm -hmm. here's what people usually do. Make decisions, and then they want God to bless a bad decision. <laughs> you ever did that? Yes. <laughs> but I'm hoping that you have the best, wonderful Christmas. If I had a keyboard here, I would play a couple hymns, a couple Christmas songs. One of my favorite ones is uh, um, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Oh, yeah. When I used to do the gospel choir, we were, we were in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh does this big thing. I forget what it's called. And they have all these choirs from all over okay. Pennsylvania come in. And we came in. And when the cameras came up on us, because this stuff is live, I, I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. So we just started singing Go Tell It on the Mountain. And it, it, it was one of the... You know how when you do the, uh, they do the replay of the, replay of the, the minutes? Mm -hmm. We made all the replays in Pennsylvania because of that song, Go Tell It on the Mountain. So that's one of my favorites. But I'm just hoping this year that you have the, the best Christmas and maybe something's going on in your family right mm -hmm. now or going on in your personal life and you don't even want Christmas to come. Mm -hmm. I want to pray for you. Uh, maybe you've got bad news. Mm -hmm. I want to pray for you. And maybe you don't know Jesus. I want to pray for you. Father, we thank you for this show. And we thank you for your son, Jesus, that came and died on the cross. We talked about his birth, but we thank you for his death. 
his burial, his birth, and his resurrection. We thank you that you died on the cross for all of our sins. And Father, I'm praying tonight that if someone doesn't know you, yes. Lord, that they would ask you, and you can pray this prayer with me, Lord, I'm sorry. I believe that you died on the cross for all of my sins. I ask you to come into my heart and forgive me of all of my sins. Lord, I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want you to control my life. Take over my life. Lord, I freely give you my life. And I pray this in Jesus' name. And if you prayed that today, and if you've left the, if you left the Lord, the Bible says if we say we have not sinned, we, have, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our fit sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Ask the Lord to forgive you and come on back. Well, Reverend Beth, we're at the end of the show. Wow. We had to do this again. It goes fast enough. It does go fast. And you won't be as nervous the next time. Either. And don't forget, where's Joy in the Journey? Where can it be reached? It's on, on YouTube, right? YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, our very own YouTube channel. And it's called Joy in the Journey. Joy in the Journey. You search for that. And we put everything in there. You can look up all the ar archives of the older programs, too. And um, MCTV, locally here in Wayne County, there's several channels um, that it can be viewed on and several different days. You can't miss it if you get on, on MCTV. Well, thanks again for tuning in. And uh, we're wishing you a Merry Christmas. And a ha I ain't going to sing it. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And find somebody that you don't know. Here's the greatest gift you can give yourself. A hi, a smile, a God bless you. And if you can say it and mean it, I love you, a hug. Because sometimes it's not what you give, it's the way you give it. Mm. And when you give of yourself, it means so much more. Thanks so much for tuning in. God bless you. I love you. So long. Goodbye. <laughs>